Hello everybody, how is it going? It's Jujubee here and today we are in Planet Zoo and this is episode 1 of my new Let's Play Planet Zoo series. In this series we're going to be building a franchise. We are not playing in franchise mode however, we are still playing in sandbox mode but we are going to be building a bunch of different zoos that are all considered to be within the same franchise. So the zoos are called Le Mans Zoo, which in French means World Zoo or the Zoo World or something along those lines. Uh, and they're just going to be in different places around the world, uh, specific, like um, specializing in specific animals. So this one is kind of like our generic base zoo. This is the home zoo, this is the main zoo, maybe the first zoo that was ever built, and it is in California. So we are building in the tropical map. And I also want to do zoos kind of around the world, you know, in Europe, maybe another one on the east coast of the United States, one in um, Africa, one in Asia, and those will kind of specialize on the animals within that area. In this zoo, we are starting with the saltwater crocodile. And um, I don't know, there's no really specific reason why I picked this animal. I just kind of wanted this area of the zoo to be sort of like an estuary area or swampy kind of area where there's a lot of water um, and a little bit of muddy kind of land area. So we're going to be doing the saltwater crocodiles on this side. And then on the other side, we're going to be doing the two types of turtles um, as well. And then we are going to be building like a learning facility or whatever. Um, I guess we can call it like a learning facility where we'll have like a bunch of exhibits as well. So I kind of wanted this path here to be like a wooden raised path so people felt like they were walking sort of on like this porch deck kind of area um, a little bit raised up above all the water. And then on this side we will have the nice large saltwater crocodile exhibit. Now the style of building that uh, I'm going with I'm not quite sure exactly yet. Um, so we're using like this stone wood or stone wall kind of texture and then limestone and then the, the uh, blue shingle roof. Uh, this building doesn't really come out too hot uh, <laughs> compared to the way we build the learning facility. So uh, after I built the, one, the learning facility in the next episode that we're going to do, um, I realized I kind of like that style of building a lot more than I did for this one. Um, but I did just kind of want to get this building down and start moving on with the zoo because I feel like the first exhibit or habitat that you put down is always the hardest just because there's no constraints, there's no barriers, there's nothing to go off over anything. So there's nothing to really gauge how big it should be, what style of building the other buildings are, how big those buildings are and stuff like that. So I just wanted to get something down, something covered and move on with it and I figured we would just come back to this building um, at some point in the future. Which, yes, we are going to. <laughs> we will. Um, because the learning facility has more of a, it uses the stone brick texture as well, but more of that and glass uh, on the outside. And then the inside, we use the limestone as the interior walls. And I love the way that building comes out. It's a much more modern building. So I think we're going to upgrade this building in a couple episodes to get it to fit that more. Um, but for now, this building is just kind of like a large maintenance building that has all of the buildings that we will need for the zoo to run from the beginning. So we have the, you know, the quarantine, the vet clinic, uh, trading center, uh, all that stuff that we can, we need um, just for it to begin. And it's three stories, and the stairs do work, so they go up and down. And I have the um, uh, path kind of go out into a balcony setting so we can see staff members walking around on those balconies as well from an outside uh, point of view which I do really like. So for the um, settings that we have set, so we are playing in sandbox mode, but I still wanted it to feel like I was in a franchise mode. The only thing I don't like um, is I'm just not really good at the game, so I usually always, my parts always fail um, <laughs> uh, shortly after because I'm just not good with the money and stuff. So I wanted to play in sandbox so I had a little bit more control of all those aspects. So I'm just gonna go through the settings and show you guys what we have in case you wanna build along with me. So for the animals, we have aging and birth turned off as well as death through aging. So none of our animals will age after we put them into the zoo and they're not going to die because they get old. So they'll still be able to die of other causes like not getting fed or fighting or illness or anything like that. So we'll still have to be concerned about those things but we just won't have to worry about them aging and dying. And the main reason I turned that off is because we are going to be focusing on building and the design aspect. I felt like we might lose track of them a little bit and I didn't want all of our animals to grow up and die <laughs> and then us not have enough money to repopulate the zoo. 
So for now that it's just turned off, we might turn it on back in, in, in the future if we want to. Um, and I also have, um, oh no, I don't have, uh, welfare, yeah, sorry. Welfare is turned off right now just because at the beginning of the zoo, there's so much that we have to do and worry about and kind of focusing on layout. I didn't want to have to focus too hard on the welfare. I'm still taking it into consideration when building the exhibits, um, but I just don't have it turned off to where we won't have so many protesters in the zoo if something is off. So after we get a few exhibits down, the money is more stabilized, um, our guests are happy and stuff like that, we'll go back in and make sure we'll turn welfare back on and kind of make sure everybody is pinpointed exactly what and how they need to be. Now for the guests, the only uh, adjustment that I made um, is that I turned vandalism off. And the reason I turned vandalism off is because I don't feel like it's really a realistic thing to have people coming into the zoo and destroying things like benches and trash cans so frequently. I'm sure it happens. I'm sure people come in and spray paint the benches and stuff and all, all the time. But I just felt like the way it happens in Planet Zoo, it's just kind of, or in Planet Coaster as well, it's just kind of unrealistic. So I've turned that off for now, just so we don't have to worry about it. Um, and then for money, I do have unlimited money and unlimited conservation turned off. So I gave a small loan of a million dollars and a conservation loan of 100,000 credits. Um, and that is where we are starting. Um, and we are also on easy mode. And then I also have power everything and clean water turned on. I think in the future as well, we will turn those back on. So we will have to worry about the water and the electric. But for now, that is all we have to worry about. Um, so we do have to worry about our economy and our money as well as our conservation credits. But I just gave us a small little loan, well small loan, I gave us a pretty substantial loan, but that way we can kind of kick off with starting on, focusing on the layout, focusing on the exhibits, and kind of making it look nice as opposed to functional. So as you can see here, we are starting actually decorating the exhibit, and something that I wanted to have was a lot of areas where there's flat, elevated rocks for the alligators to climb onto, relax, and sunbathe. So there's two main areas of viewing. The way I did the path, as you can see, it kind of bulges out. So guests can only view from the two areas where it's closest to the actual exhibit. Um, and we are going to change the barriers a little bit so they can't see when they're not in those areas. So the two areas where they can actually view the animals is where the rocks uh, features are. So that when the alligators go up there and rest on the rock, which they do sometimes and it's pretty cool, they get really close to the guests in a safe you know, environment. So I feel like it gives a lot more interaction. Uh, and these are the new rocks that we got with the update that I really do like. And then in this area in the middle here where it bulges out just a little bit, um, we're going to be making a little learning facility kind of thing where we can learn about deforestation and climate change. And then across the back we put bamboo just to kind of close off the exhibit, not make it seem too expansive, give it a little bit more finite um, borders. On the back of the exhibits, every time I do an ex or a habitat like this, I like to have chain link along the back just so that when guests are looking in, it seems a little bit more bigger, so it doesn't feel like they're in this claustrophobic box. Now we are putting in the enrichment items. We do put in two mud baths, just because I felt like um, there's two alligators, so I wanted to give them two baths so that they can each <laughs> bathe separately. And then we gave a whole bunch of the water play on the other side there, as you can see, for them to kind of go and hang out in the water if they really wanted to. Um, and here is our two alligators. We have one male and one female. So now um, we're going to go in and work on our educational pieces and so we're going to have the regular boards and stuff near where they can view the alligators but in the middle section we're going to do a piece on um, climate change and deforestation because wetlands and swamps are very affected by climate change. They are very sensitive and not really resilient to changes in the climate and currently right now with the huge change to like precipitation um, they're experiencing very frequent and, and very intense droughts um, as well as flooding which is you know, a huge impact on the animals that live in these environments. So I wanted to have a very special area that shows our guests how climate change and um, deforestation is affecting these swamps. Um, and so that's what we're going to do in the middle here. And um, we're just going to use the two informational boards and put the information on it. And then I'm going to use some of the pieces that we have in the game, so some of the tree stumps and logs, as well as the um, snow-covered rocks to um, 
show that. Now, I don't really think in a swamp, uh, climate change specifically is going to have effects of snow. Um, I think it's more of just too much water or not enough water to kind of sustain the wetland. Um, but I just kind of did a generic um, climate change effect to it. Um, so you see you can hear we're just putting some trees down um, for deforestation and then we're going to be putting the snow rocks down. And then right down where the steps, the steps go across from this on the other side is where we're going to be putting our learning center. Um, and that's going to have tons of um, exhibit animals in it, um, some insects and some bugs. So now you can see we are done building and here are some glamour shots of the, um, the alligators running around in their exhibit as well as some of the views from the, um, the guest side. So I really like the way this exhibit came out. The only thing I'm a little um, iffy on is the way the building came out because it's kind of just bland to be completely honest. It's not that special. So I think we'll go back and we'll adjust that building and kind of make it a little bit more va va voom California vibes if you will. So that is the end of the episode. If you did enjoy it, please leave a like. If you have any questions or recommendations for the future of the zoo, please leave it in the comment section below. And I will see you guys in the next episode. Have a great day. Oh, wow.